All right, welcome to another episode of WGON Live Traffic Report. I am Eric. And I'm Matt. And tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Mrs. Suze Romero, who's going to join us in a couple minutes and talk to us about uh, the uh, upcoming release of the amuse amusement park, something Matt and I are, are uh, very excited about. And actually, we uh, both had a chance to, to take it in recently. Yeah, uh, we talked about it, I guess it was last week, we, f we finally got a chance to, to talk about it because we knew we were going to be talking to Susan and with the announcement that, you know, this is finally going to be released and, and we're going to get some new Romero stuff uh, coming down the pike. Uh, we felt it was it was best that, you know, we get Suze on here and hear it right from the George Romero Foundation themselves about what fans can expect, some of the things that she's been seeing. Because uh, I know there's there's us diehards that really, really want to consume as much George as we can. And then there's other people that are going to be pleasantly surprised that there's another Romero release in the works and something that they probably haven't even heard of until mm -hmm. recently. I mean, as, as a you know young fan years ago, it would pop up every once in a while and some of the stuff I'd see online, but no one ever talked about it. So it just kind of get brushed aside. And, you know, as it, the years went on, um, it kind of started popping up as people were discovering more and more things. And, you know, next to, you know, the, the three hour black and white cut of Martin, you know, this is a highly anticipated uh, George Romero discovery. Absolutely. I think uh, the, the cinema of George Romero, the, the, the uh, biography that came out, I forget the author's name. It was called Night of the Living Dead with a K on the night uh, mm -hmm. instead of an N. That was the first time I'd heard about it, and I've kind of poked around, you know, trying to have a chance to watch it or see who's maybe sitting on a copy of it. And uh, everything so far, or, you know, everything led to a, a dead end. But uh, luckily, the GARF has uh, picked up the initiative and uh, it looks like it's coming out soon. So that's, yeah. that's great news. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, why don't we jump into it? Let's bring Suze on and uh, see what she has to say. All right. Hi, everybody. Hey, Suze. Hey. Hey, Suze. Happy 4th of July. 4th <laughs> of July weekend. Hey. Happy yeah, belated absolutely. Canada Day. Thank you. Thank you. So is, is Canada Day like your 4th of July or what is yes. the... the okay. Yes, it's our, it's our Canada Day. And um, I work because you folks were working. So I was working. So today was my uh, day off. <laughs> <laughs> Because most of you had the day off today, so. Yep, yep. Before the mm -hmm. July falls on a weekend, so but yeah. we can't go anywhere. Can't right. do anything. No, be play safe, guys. You gotta play safe. <laughs> <laughs> George used to say, "Stay scared," but I think we're gonna say, "Play safe." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Yeah, wear your mask. Yeah. And we mentioned briefly off air. You're you're in Canada, who's doing a, a lot better with this uh, yeah, COVID nineteen. Crushing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we have our share, as I was saying to you folks uh, before, we have our fair share of idiots. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we are buying into the science. Uh, we're buying into the masks. We're buying into the social distancing. Um, but like, you know, a lot of countries, we were caught with our pants down. And uh, but um, we uh, we listened to the experts and uh, we're doing OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. let's, keep, let's keep doing okay so we can all get together soon oh, I'd love that Actually, It's yeah. been too long It has, it totally has yeah. I have an office in Pittsburgh So uh, office slash apartment And uh, I love it there I love Pittsburgh, George loves Pittsburgh And uh, I like to go as often as I can yeah, me and Eric painted the town beige a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were, what does we, that mean? What does well, that mean? Oh, well, we didn't exactly paint the town red. Okay, so beige means what, beige. though? It was, I don't know. We, you know, we were low-key. It was just, you know. <laughs> okay, like you really low-key. Okay. It was, it was a two-man invasion of the city. <laughs> <you know>. Okay. <laughs> Oh, come on, Matt. That's a line from Land of the Dead. <laughs> it's a line from Land of the Dead. Okay. All right. Let my geek flag fly a little bit in front of Sue. Okay. Thanks. That's what Call, me out. It's Call me okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to geek out. Okay. I try. We, can, we can do that here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, we're, we're, we're so excited um, to have you on, Suze. We, we love you. absolutely talking to you. Thanks. Uh, 
you know, anytime news uh, comes from you or the Garf, uh, we're, we're very excited for. We, we love that you are super hands on and yeah. you're giving us updates and specials and film festivals. And lo and behold, we get news of the finding of the amusement park. The, you know, one of the long lost uh, George Romero films. And and George, you know, it asked George about certain movies. He didn't have a lot of recollection of it. What what do you what did you know of the amusement park and what did you learn w once this film was found? Well, it, it, you know, uh, George had never mentioned it. Uh, and, you know, I was present at uh, thousands and thousands of interviews. He never mentioned it. And uh, Julia Daniola, who's a, a, a very good friend of ours, uh, said, uh, gave us the 16, the can, the actual uh, film. And she also gave us a DVD. And about two weeks before George passed, uh, he was doing well. And, and uh, we just uh, slapped in the movie. And it was a bit of a big wow, because it's very different, uh, but it has George Romero all over it. Um, <clears throat> it we were just gobsmacked. And uh, so, so, so why, George, haven't we heard about it? And he said, ah, you know, it was nothing. It was, you know, it was a three day shoot, bing, bang, boom, no money as always. And it was like a thing for the Lutherans. It was just like nothing. So he, he, he just didn't think of it as anything that would be pertinent to his career. Uh, and, uh, well, I, I absolutely couldn't uh, disagree with Maestro more. Uh, mm. It was, uh, uh, even though I, I, I have to give a caveat, it's not a horror film, but it's horrific in the sense of, of what the way he depicts old age mm -hmm. and the way the story unfolds and the way he shoots it and the way the just everything it's just uh a really it, and if you're a cinephile and if you're a george romero completist you're going to want to see it uh it's uh yeah it's interesting well maybe the one. the horror element of it is things really have not changed all that much well, that's for the right that's right. The elderly. That's right. The things haven't changed all that much. Almost anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know when when you know in Night of the Living Dead when they say you know it, it, I'm the boss up here and you're the boss down there uh, still applies to our social uh, fabric today, especially in the United States. And you know the way the aged are still uh, dismissed. It's it's just amazing to me that, you know, once you get past a certain age, you start to disappear. Yeah. You, know, you were relevant and then you disappear. Uh, and it's uh, a very hard portal to cross. Uh, it's a very hard portal to, uh, it, it, it's just, you know, when you think that, you know, uh, even George, you know, if, if, if you didn't know he was George Romero and he was a director at, of significance, he would be considered, you know, if he was behind the wheel, he would be considered, you know, like, oh, move over, old man, you mm -hmm. know, because he, he was old and, mm -hmm. and he would be dismissed. And uh, he would say to me, you know, Suze, that sucks. And I'd say, I know, it's awful. And it, we're all going to go through it. So it's an impactful film, and I think it needs to be seen. I think that it also um, has, uh, like I said, we, there's a couple of cameos. And if you listen to the film, George is there doing all the walla, all the talking. Mm -hmm. and there's a cameo of him. You know, I, I, I just think it's going to be great, and uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to get it out there. Heck yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, I assume it's already been remastered and. Oh, it's been, it's been, uh, 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 renovated. <laughs> <laughs> it's been restored into 4k. Um, you know, it was, it still has, you know, that beautiful 
70s magenta that you know you just can't take away uh but um you know it's it's cleaned up it's it looks good um yeah it was uh, we, we we had indie collect do it in new york and uh, they did a terrific job uh, we premiered it in Pittsburgh at our Romero Lives um, uh, Festival, and then we showed it at the MoMA, mm -hmm. uh, which was very prestigious. And, uh, and now we've got Yellow Veil, uh, the sales agents who are going to go out there and figure it out for us. I, I, I just, you know, I didn't have time. I don't have time to, to get the deals, if you know what I mean, because you yeah. just need to get it. And I also need it, you know, it was sort of like I, I had a baby, even though I'm in fact childless, but uh, it was like my baby and I had nurtured this for, you know, a few years and now I'm letting it go. <laughs> and it's, it's a little difficult, but um, sorry, I'm going to get the, uh, the experts to, um, to figure out where it needs to go. So we'll okay. See. So Yellow Veil, vale, they're are so they're not releasing it. They're they're going no, they're, to negotiate it. Yeah, they're negotiating. They're going to take a look at the foreign territories and distributors and VOD and you know theatrical. You know, obviously theatrical is a little bit out of the uh, out of the uh, picture right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, initially, uh, before COVID, I was thinking that it would be really cool to go to different big theaters, you know, big theaters, one in LA, Chicago, uh, Dallas, uh, New York, and then have special guests come and uh, see the film and then talk about the film. You know, uh, just... You know, like if we were in Toronto, we'd get David Cronenberg to, to take a look. You know, if we were in, uh, in Dallas, we'd invite somebody to go to Dallas. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, so and then I thought maybe we'd shoot it. And then we'd add it all to the, you know, because it's only a 58 minute film. So, you know, a lot of people are like, well, that's not a feature of length. I go, I know, but it's what it is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't change that. It's 58 minutes, folks. So, uh, you know, so uh, I thought maybe if we had Guillermo del Toro talk about it, it might be nice. Uh, you know, so we'll see. But the theatrical is basically out of the picture right now. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that things will go slowly so that we can do theatricals before we release the DVD. Okay. Yeah, one thing I noticed after watching it, now I was a sociology major in college, and I remember taking a class on the sociology of aging and dying. And I'll tell you what, this might have some legs in academia. Oh, it yeah. will. If sure. you could get this into, into some of those academic programs to really, you know, like a social services type program. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think that would be really interesting to show that how George filmed this 48, 47 years ago, yeah. how it's still relevant today based on the nature of it. And, you know, it's not overly scary that it's not going to appeal to a classroom for the subject matter. Um, you know, if they're looking at all the blood and gore that we see in a lot of horror films. Um, but that was one of the first things that came to my mind is if you rolled this into me on a whim and just told me, hey, we're going to watch this movie. And then I see George's name pop up there there's some relevance there as to you know you we can still be learning from it today so it's it may be old but it's still it still has its legs it does it, it definitely does um yeah uh i've had a few people uh take a look at the film uh before we decided to do this and they all said the same thing to me they just said holy shit <laughs> <laughs> whoa uh yeah uh so i thought oh okay because i, I you know sometimes when you know it's your you, you know it's somebody you love and and you know sometimes you're a little biased and you're thinking you know it's a bit risky this movie and 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 everyone that uh that i respect uh you know that i showed this film to uh said whoa yeah you gotta go there so mm -hmm. we're there 
Um, did did George ever indicate what the the Lutheran Society's response was to the project? Well, you know, I, no. <laughs> But I would imagine that <laughs> they would have probably thought, whoa, this is harsh. <laughs> like, uh -huh. so, you know, uh, it was never released. It was always supposed to go to just community centers and, um, and just, you know, uh, try to entice young people to, you know, participate in wheels, meals on wheels and, and do all of that kind of stuff. So it was never really gonna go out there um uh, but then it disappeared so it wasn't obviously something that they used uh because a lot of people are well like, jesus it was so damn scary you know i'm like okay but yeah it wasn't that scary <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. but it may not have suited their sensibility let's just put it that way so you haven't seen it right eric I have. I, oh, okay. I've, I've, I've watched it twice in the last uh, three weeks. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I, um, I was, I was surprised. Uh, it, it, it bears uh, similarities. To, a lot of similarities to uh, Season of the Witch or right. Jack. If there's kind of like the nightmare sequences and that, which I think right. is appropriate the way he applied it to this yeah. situation. Right. Um, and he, he kind of used used basically all the tactics in his tool bag at that time. You and did. it's a great, great representation of, of that era of his work. I think it was kind of maybe was it after the crazies that he did it or it was that year. Same year. Same year. OK. Yeah. 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 And, you know, uh, actually, uh, you know, that uh, the scariest scene for me is the uh, fortune teller scene. Mm -hmm. where, you know, they young people come to see her, and they're so excited and in love and beautiful. And and she says, "Are you sure you want to see your your future?" And of course, the future isn't wonderful. So that scared me a bit uh, as well. But it also reminds me of Dawn of the Dead and the way the old people move. You know, the way okay. they. You know, like the biker scene, and just, yes, I don't know. There's something about uh, the that film that reminds me of Dawn, even though uh, uh, obviously a very different film. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. and blasphemy. Uh, you know, uh, heads up. I don't love Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> we know. Oh my God! Thanks for coming, Suze. It was a blast. We'll talk. No, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, everybody's okay. like. Okay, Suze, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> even, George, even George said to me, you know, fuck, you're the only person on the planet, right? You know that, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <Okay>, well. <laughs> so what has, um, have you gotten any feedback or what's the feedback been from, from people that have seen it that were involved with it, like a Mike Gornick or a Bonnie Heisman since this kind of come back up? Have they seen it? Do they... You know, you know uh, uh, no, they haven't seen it. Uh, actually, that's not true. Bonnie Heinzman has seen it. Uh, uh, Bonnie has, she saw it at the Pittsburgh, um, at the Pittsburgh premiere, and she saw it. Um, you know, and her husband, you know, was uh, huge, uh, you know, in this film and uh, part of, you know, late an image and, you know, uh, just, yeah, he was a, a big part of George's early life, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned earlier, you know, the potential for you may maybe recording um, some folks like Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro and folks like that discussing the film. Has there been any uh, consideration about perhaps some other features that could be included on the, the eventual release? Well, I don't really want to add features to it, you know, like other films of George's. I think it needs to stand alone. It's not really a part of his uh, other films. I, I just, I, you know, if people want to put it to uh, with other films, we'll have to discuss it, take case by case. But I'm not inclined. I well, I mean, uh, more more specifically, like the uh, additional extra content for the disc. Well, we have, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of photographs, uh, stills, uh, and no, so that's it. We have the stills, uh, we have the script, uh, we have the budget, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, that's it. That's all we have. So, 
you know, you can't invent or create anything other than having um, celebrities look at it and, and, and make comment. And, um, you know, and also George had a really great uh, ability to take a snapshot. You know, when he made a film, he took a snapshot of time. And, uh, and this is a perfect example of, you know, uh, an amusement park with old people as the, you know, the metaphor. It's just, it's just so Romero. It, it's just, uh, it's not even funny how Romero this film is. I, and I think you guys mm -hmm. agree, right? It's 100%. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's got his stamp on it. It yeah. has, it has a stamp on it. For yeah. sure. Especially early 70s, George. There was just something about those films up until about mm -hmm. Martin that had their own unique, you know, time stamp or, you know, visual cue. And then everything from dawn to day had, you know, he's got certain eras yeah. that, mm -hmm. that, that are distinctly George. And, you know, it might yeah. not look like a George film, but it reads like a George film. It's got right. a lot of that underlying stuff. And, you know, Eric was, was talking about extras. And I think we said this last week, I said, I would love, I'm a commentary junkie. So getting someone like, um, you know, Mike Gornick to sit and watch the film and talk about it would be a huge uh, plus because there's not much else in the way that we could do, or you could do, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, but I think, you know, hearing, you know, Gornick talk about it, you Nick know, or, Andrea as well, Nick Andrea yeah. or Bonnie, you know, getting them yeah. to, to sit and yeah. watch the movie and, and really reflect on, you know, maybe not the actual filming because it was so short, but you know, a lot of the stuff that's come afterwards, their thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, I think there's some, there's some room there for that, that I think people will eat up. I agree. I agree. Well, we'll have to see what the distributor wants, right? We'll uh, we'll try to uh, work with the distributor who who <clears throat> will you know create a package or a path uh, for the film, and uh, and we'll see. You know, uh, right now um, my job was basically get it restored, uh, g get the chain of titles sorted out, <laughs> which is really a slog but we we got it done and um and i'm still working on deliverables so it's all you know it'll happen it just you know it's a, it's just you never you, you never think about how much work it all go what goes behind it but uh there is a lot of work going on so but we'll get it done um and all the proceeds, by the way, go straight to the, the foundation. So it's, you know, so the money that is being made, if there's any money to be made, goes straight to the foundation. So, you know, if somebody says, well, Jesus, it's a $24, you know, DVD, uh, it's going to a foundation. It's going to the George Romero Foundation. So, you know. Pay well, the that, freight. <laughs> well, that pay would be the, that, pay the freight. That would be a great supplement to put on there about you know exactly what Garth is for and and how right. you know the purchase of this movie. Yeah, you know this is we're showing you what you what your your dollar is going towards, and, right. and I think that you know, will. Yeah, we want to run a, a short film uh, film contest and inter international short film contest. Uh, you know, we want to you know. What differs between, you know, a New Zealand horror film and a Norwegian horror film or a South African, you know, I mean, it's so interesting that what horrifies a culture is so different. And uh, mm -hmm. so we're, we're very interested in, in discovering uh, some of that and, and just helping, you know, women in horror and just, you know, the whole thing, you know, just, uh, Trying to uh, elevate, elevate horror, and just uh, making sure George Romero stays, you know, relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what we're doing. Um, well, you're, you're touching on it now. That was one of the questions I had. Was uh, what what are if you know as far as what you can mention? What are some future projects you may the Garth might be uh, considering? Well, uh, so we have some virtual events, unfortunately, uh, sort of slated, um, you know, being a, 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 I would say anti-social media person as I am, uh, but you know, I, like I really, I, I do, I do like the idea of people being together in a room, 
uh, like-minded people hanging out, seeing something uh, that, and they can talk about it. There's something visceral, something totally enjoyable about that. Um, so virtual really doesn't turn me on, uh, but you know, we have to roll. We have to roll with the punches. So that's what we're going to do. Especially well, we in a post COVID world. Well, this right. is it, you know, so, you know, John Harrison has his, uh, you know, tales from the dark side being re-released. Re -re they restored it, re-released. Uh, they're going to re-release it. So we want to do something terrific with that. Uh, Creep Show 2 is coming out. We want to make sure that we're we're right there uh, with Greg. Uh, probably going to do a little celebration somewhere in L.A. Um, you know, we also have uh, George's new book coming out uh, with Dan Krauss mm -hmm. in August. Uh, uh, even though that's not the foundation, uh, it's 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 all about Romero and him being, you know, uh, out there, uh, talked about actually more now than, than it was the first, you know, the last two years of his life. So I think we're doing okay in that regard. Is there any, uh, potential for maybe another film fest like the Romero lives? Oh yes. Yes, definitely. But I think we're going to, you know, we can't obviously keep showing George Romero movies, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so that obviously, uh, you know, we might do, uh, you know, we're going to change it up. So we are really interested in women and in horror. Uh, I think, uh, I think women in horror needs to, I think we need to ramp it up. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, I just think that they've been under, under um, the, uh, you know, under, uh, uh, I don't even know what the word, I, I'm trying to find the word, but they're, they, uh, you know, women in horror have uh, an audience, but I think we need to enlarge that audience. I think women in horror needs to be expanded significantly. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And to the extent that you can discuss it, I know, I mean, you mentioned Romero completist. I, I'm definitely one of those. Um, I'm super personally super interested in seeing uh, George's episodes of the winners uh, eventually get a release. Um, Wow. Is, is there any any potential for that? Or? Well, I, I, I uh, first of all, George learned how to uh, edit. Uh, his editing skills were honed during that period of time, uh, doing the winners. And when you take a look at them, um, they are amazingly cut. Uh, it's, um, it's just, and you know, sports is a difficult, um, a, a difficult thing to actually cut, uh, lots of fast movements and, um, Anyway, he did a beautiful job. Uh, we'd love to. Uh, we'd love. We'd love to get them restored. For sh first of all, uh, so Bonnie Heinzman has the rights to them. Okay. And she has um, approached the foundation and said, "You know, what can we do to get this uh, out there?" And I said, "Well, I think we need to." Uh, you know, I think we need to restore them first. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so there's cost to that. Uh, and then once they're restored or get somebody who's interested in, in the, in these pieces and have them restore it. And, uh, but, um, you know, there hasn't been that much interest. Now, do you remember them, Eric? Did, have you seen them? Yeah, actually I, um, uh, Bill actually released a few. I think it was in the early 2000s through okay. a website that like he Bill, has. Bill Heinzman? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, he, it was the, the Pittsburgh-centric ones, uh, the ones okay. involving the Steelers or Willie Starkle. Right. So right. there's a handful of them that are actually out there in VHS form. Uh -huh. And he also, during the O.J. Simpson trial, he, he, rel or he relinquished the rights and that got actually a commercial release, the OJ Simpson episode. Okay, but other than that, um, yeah. 
So Juice on the Loose is, is the only one, uh, and there's another one that Bonnie, Bonnie owns them all. She has the rights to all of them, except for Juice on the Loose. And mm -hmm. uh, there's another one that a Pittsburgh person has the rights to. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I'm not so sad about the Juice on the Loose. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay. Uh, we can, we don't need to uh, amplify that one so much. Yeah. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, though, he is part of football and foot part of football history. And, uh, to just erase him is, you know, uh, I know there's two points of view. It's sort of like the Confederate monuments, you know, mm -hmm. they are a part of your history, uh, like it or not. Uh, and, um. So uh, I'm actually pretty well against removing them myself. I think that they maybe put them somewhere else and then put a story together with, you know, in a, in a museum and say, this is our history. This is, you know, where they belong. Um, but to just, you know, crush them is just, I don't think it's particularly right. But, uh, and the same thing with OJ, you know, uh, obviously not a good guy, um, but, you know, he was a great running back. <laughs> and George did a great movie <laughs> about him. Just happened to be there during his run for 2000. It's amazing. Oh my God. And, and, yeah. it, and he was, and George said to me, Suze, he never said a bad word to anybody. He was like the nicest guy never said a bad word to a waiter, you know, like he was just mm -hmm. a nice guy. So it was so hard to imagine, you know, uh, his, his future. Um, yeah. But anyway, we have the winners at, well, Bonnie has them and uh, all we need is somebody to have interest in getting them, you know, refreshed and, 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 and shown because they're spectacular. Mm hmm. Um, as we were sitting here talking, I, I mean, as I was thinking about, was there the potential for the unearthing of any other industrial films that he worked on? No, but uh, the archive is full of, uh, you know, uh, just unproduced works. You know, mm -hmm. they're just, they're just, there's treatments and scripts and there's, uh, noodling i mean he was just so uh, such a creative guy and he, uh, always writing 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 he always he wrote his whole life and uh so there's a lot there so 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 no other industrials per se uh at least uh ah uh, but okay we do have a little something though um <laughs> well because before um um before 1968, his uncle gave him uh, a few thousand dollars to buy a Bolex. And he did uh, 20 vignettes. And he called them expostulations. Oh, no. Do you, have you ever heard of expostulations? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We have 20 minutes. We have wow. 20 minutes. We have man with the revolver. We have 20 minutes. Uh, and so Jesus, so we're going to restore it. Uh, so it's not an industrial, but we are definitely, we are definitely going to restore it. And, um, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it's only 20 minutes. Uh, but, it's, it was, um, it, but it's almost like finding, you know, like a, a Charlie Chaplin dusty <laughs> old thing. <laughs> Not that I'm comparing Charlie Chaplin to George Romero, I'm just, but I'm just saying that you have a filmmaker who, you know, shot stuff and we've got, and it was, it was said to be lost. Uh, and George, uh, when he died, thought it was lost and so we have a vignette we have 20 minutes and where the hell are the other 19 like mm. they they could pop up i could get an email tomorrow and saying hey you know my grandmother has these yeah. movies you know so we'll see maybe they will pop up oh, um, and, you know so hopefully funny. you know the release of the amusement park made people make people go into their attics right because um, they're somewhere they, they got to be, so, they I mean, gotta if we, be somewhere. If we yeah, found the amusement park, 
you know, we can find this. So hopefully people are going to start talking to their aunts and uncles and grandparents and, right. you know, so, any film so, canister I'm going to start going through that I come out in the wild and hope of seeing George's initials <laughs> on it. <laughs> so I got an email uh, uh, at the foundation uh, saying, uh, do you recognize this as it being your husband's? And it was a still life, you know, a basket of fruit, a vase. And it's signed George Romero. And it's George Romero's signature. So mm -hmm. he drew that for when he was at Carnegie Tech studying graphic art. They had to learn classical painting and all that. And he drew this, or he painted this. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, that's definitely George's. And would you be so kind as to, you know, uh, uh, donate it to, uh, to the foundation? And he said, let me think about it. And I've not heard from him since. But mm. the thing is, though, is that it popped up. You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was, uh, it popped up. So we just, we just don't know what's going to happen. Has George ever talked about anything like that, that he's lost throughout his career that he wished he had back? Um, what, I mean, George, from, from yeah. small to large, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything masterful, but anything that meant something to George, he never, I kind of. He never looked back. Never looked back. He didn't care about the past. Yeah. He just wanted it was future for him. What am I going to write next? What am I going to do next? Uh, it was never about the past. His eyes would roll. You want, you want to talk about Night of the Living Dead again? You know, so he was really, you know, like, uh, you know, obviously he, he uh, you know, would talk about his past because people wanted to talk about it. But he was personally not interested in any of it. He mm. was just all about the future. What was so. and 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 I I all the years I spent around George, I never really talked about his work. But what was one thing that his eyes always lit up when people wanted to talk to him about? Wow. Um, hmm. That you knew once he got started, it was going to oh, be a while, and you would go well, off to lunch. Okay. Well. <laughs> No, I think he liked to talk about old movies. Mm -hmm. He loved to talk about old films. Yep. And uh, and if somebody was interested in a you know William Wyler or uh, you know um, uh, you know David Lean or you know any or or uh, you know uh, in anybody uh, old movies. He he loved old movies. And uh, when he met me, uh, he you know. You know how you ask people on a date, you know, like certain strategic questions to find <laughs> out, you know, uh, uh, to, you know, can we even go to the next date? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he asked me, you know, like what movies had I seen, you know, and, you know, it was quite pitiful. <laughs> um, uh, and he said, mm, wow you're kind of like retarded <laughs> and I went, Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know I was retarded, but okay. And uh, so he spent the next 12 years uh, exposing me to films and uh, cause he was actually a cinephile and uh, you know, so, so if somebody wanted to talk to him about the blob, that's where I would go out for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember seeing him. The speak blob. Once. He loved the blob. Oh yeah. my god, the yeah. blob, the thing, um, yeah. ants. Uh, <laughs> he loved all of those boy movies, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. You know, like he liked Stuart Granger and the, you know, the swashbuckling movies. And uh, so, yeah. So I think movies. If you got him going on movies, he, he would talk to you for the whole night about it. Yeah, I remember seeing him talk in New England a couple years ago, and he was talking about the tales of Hoffman and the Red mm -hmm. Shoes, and and that Christmas for Christmas that year, my wife got them for me. She and she put a note. She said, "These are George's favorite films. You should watch them." Right. Well, and, that's, yeah. and 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 I re I remember that conversation. He did. He talked for a while about these two old films that I'd really never heard of. Mm 
Yeah. And 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 he just went on about them, and people were, yeah. you know, one ask creep show, and he talks about these films from the '40s and '50s, and yeah. you know, yeah. definitely there was a change in in in, in the behavior. He was he yeah. was a little excited. Yeah, he mm -hmm. liked it, and uh, you know, he actually Uncle Monroe um, was a godsend to him because he exposed him to uh, Broadway and to wonderful films. But George was desperate to see Tarzan, the new Tarzan. And, uh, and Uncle Monroe said, no, no, we're not going to go see Tarzan. We're going to go see a movie called The Tales of Hoffman. And George was like, oh, man, I want to see Tarzan. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he saw that film and, and it changed his life. It totally changed his life. So, uh, so he saw Tarzan and he liked it. But it didn't change his life, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, as we were talking, I I, re I remembered something you had mentioned in our previous interview. It's I think it's been a couple of years now um, that you and George and Michael Felsher you recorded yourselves watching all of his yes. films. Is yes. there any plans for that material? It's audio, so we okay. have. Um, about, uh, I don't know, 25, 26 hours of him just riffing <laughs> on, you know, his movies. And uh, so uh, I've not actually heard them. Um, uh, and it was actually uh, the second time I've been to a film festival, a Romero film festival with Romero. So... Uh, three months into our dating, uh, George said, well, I guess it's time for you to see my movies. <laughs> so it took him a few days to get the movies because, of course, I didn't have any of them. <laughs> and uh, so it took him a few days to get all of them. And once he accrued all of them, um, and you know, somebody asked me the other day, you know, did you see them sequentially? And... I think we didn't because he was having trouble getting uh, some of them. So we watched what we could. And then the day, uh, the last day, uh, we had a courier and saved the day. And we got, you know, vanilla. I think we got season of the witch. So we didn't watch them sequentially. But with Felsher, uh, we watched it sequentially. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and George, it was funny because, you know, he didn't see his movies, you know, like what's, you know, like I know for Diary and Survival and uh, even Land, um, uh, he, I don't think George saw Diary or Survival after he made it. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think he saw it that night with Felsher. Uh, and of course, when we were dating, um, you know, that, you know, it wasn't, it didn't exist. So, um, but that night he saw Diary and Survival and he hadn't seen them since he had made them. So it was interesting. It was interesting as an art, to see an artist look at his work um, in a different, you know, different way, you know, because you just, you know, when you're a filmmaker, it's, it's, it, you're obsessed. Everything is about this movie for a year and a half. Well, it, the writing of the script and then, well, because with George, he always wrote his scripts. He, he was involved in every step of the film. Uh, so it was interesting for him to see his reaction to diary and survival. And, uh, you know, he looked at us both and said, yeah, not bad, eh? <laughs> and we're like, yes. <laughs> and it's amazing, too, is that, you know, he's such a humble guy, you know, just so very, um, not self-effacing necessarily, just just a humble guy. And uh, so for him to kind of like do a little braggadocia, you know, just, you know, it was like, oh. <laughs> you know, it was, it, it, it was charming, you know, for him to say, eh, not so bad. So it was, um, it was nice. Perhaps uh, if you did another film festival like the Romero Lives, perhaps you could play those commentaries over it as opposed to the film yeah. audio. 
Yeah, no, we could. No. So they're, they're in the archive. So um, I think that, uh, you know, Ben, um, Ben Rubin at the, uh, at the library is probably pouring over them. Uh, there's a lot of hours there. Um, so, you know, I think they're still going, you know, inch by inch through all of it. I don't know if they're quite done just yet, but uh, I think they're close. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of our comments from Mark Norris um, it was something I was going to mention, but he, he says, there you go. Um, Tony Booba's lightning over Braddock DVD. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to just check that out, but it was released a few months back and it's basically just a collection of all of his shorts as well as some of his longer forms, uh, features that are closer to an hour, closer to amusement park length. Right. Um, maybe that's something that could be done for George's like commercials and such. Uh, so, maybe we ha so all of those are at uh, Kodak Eastman um, in New York. Mm -hmm. So um, as a, as the estate, we have access to it, but it's not housed uh, at the archive. It's housed at Eastman. And okay. so, and so was the, so that little 20 minute vignette is part of Eastman that collection so yeah mm -hmm. and just the other day we were looking at uh you know the calgon commercial mm -hmm. <laughs> you know his calgon commercial the like, calgon you know, story the yeah. calgon story you know and you think uh so you have these dudes who get hired to do uh you know a commercial for calgon <clears throat> and in those days commercials were very kind of um basic right i mean but then you get George Romero uh, and his team uh, and they do a Calgon commercial and Jesus, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's so different. It's so, and it's so good. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, they should run it now. <laughs> they should run yeah. it now. They'd sell Calgon, you know? Yeah. So, so it just goes to show you that when you have a talent and uh, and somebody says, you know, hey, can you do this for us? And, um, you know, the, he goes, OK, and then does it. And it's so different and it's so good and it still stands up, you know, so it's it's great. So, yeah, so Kodak. So when we were so when we did Romero Lives, and when Brooklyn Festival did their deal, uh, they showed all of those films. So, um, yeah, so they're they're available. They just need to be um, they, they can't be exploited in, 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 in that case because it doesn't belong to us. Mm. George, you yeah. know, George gave it to them. So. OK. Yeah. Well, shoot. <laughs> yeah. What else? Sorry, I got a little emotional when you were talking about Aww. George, talking about survival. You know, obviously I got an emotional attachment to that. So it was, yeah, you know, just, just to hear that little story with George and I could just see the look in his eye and it made me get a little emotional. So I was just. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, his anniversary of his death is coming. And uh, so I've been quite emotional for the last uh, few weeks and sort of like, you know, living through it and um yeah, it's um, he was uh, a hugely impactful person to me and to all of us. So yeah, I miss him yeah. every minute of the day. We all do. I definitely yeah. can definitely yeah. can say I I never envisioned a post Romero world, and mm -hmm. and it's it's something we navigate every day. Yeah, and and we try to make the best of, and you know that that. You know, that was the reason we Eric started this. Right. You know, this was. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've been sort of living in George's world right now. Right. Because this pandemic is, you know, is it's, 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 it's yeah. very reflective of what he, in his head um, and how the Americans have reacted to it is exactly how George would have anticipated, uh, you know, uh, the reactions. Uh, and, uh, so a lot of people have been talking to, or speaking to me about, you know, George and, uh, what would he be doing during this period of time? And I, I think it's two things. Um, first of all, he would have been happy as a clam because 
he would have been stuck at home with no obligations. So that would have been a good thing. <laughs> no interviews or no, you know, nothing. You just be like, Suze, let's play a game of Scrubs. You know, let's do Puzz. Let's do, you know, watch a movie. He would have been happy, happy, happy. And he also would have probably been doing a lot of writing. And he probably would have been watching CNN avidly. And I would be in the background going, shut it off. Shut it off. Because <laughs> it, it, it repeats over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And I'm like, he said, but no, but there could be breaking news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but you're not going to miss a thing. Anyway, and he'd be writing, right, right, right. So he'd be writing. Um, um, and then he'd probably come up with a script about the world and the way we're ha It's because it was always about how human beings behave under duress. And that was what he wrote about all his whole life. Mm -hmm. And so he would be writing about this and how how we are behaving badly, mm -hmm. <laughs> how we haven't learned our lesson, how we just can't see beyond our noses, you know, um, and how, you know, stupid we really are. And so, you know, so he would be really, uh, he would be seriously busy <laughs> right now. Yeah. You know, I, I actually watched uh, Diary of the Dead <laughs> last night. Oh. That movie is incredibly relevant to what's it going is. on right now with everybody. I mean, it's on one side of the coin. Thank goodness we have these cell phones where people can record these incidents. But and then at the same time, people don't want to, like you said, they can't see beyond their nose. They don't want to investigate one step further. They just want to have a knee-jerk reaction to what they yeah. see. They want it's, to be it, reactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, all it's about incredibly reaction. Relevant. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, yeah, Diary, first of all, he, he, he thought uh, social media was uh, going to be our demise. Uh, he just didn't trust it, didn't like it, uh, thought it was dangerous. Uh, it, he was very, very negative towards it. Um, mm -hmm. Very negative. And yet, uh, I have to say, uh, during the pandemic, though, uh, we've been able to communicate with each other, uh, you know, through various ways. And uh, thank goodness we have all of this, because how would we have survived without <laughs> you know, Zoom or, you know, this <laughs> or, or, you know, just, it would have been very difficult, um, mm -hmm. much more difficult. And um, so, you know, like everything, you know, there's positives and negatives to everything. Um, uh, George was a half empty guy, <laughs> you know, glass half, half empty. And, and I was a, 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 you know, glass, you know, full. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, and uh, so together we were, you know, we had a nice glass. <laughs> so, um, but he was a negative guy. Um, but um, yeah, he, 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 uh, he would have been happy, but he would have just been like, just beyond, be beside himself as to uh, the American antics today. He would have just mm -hmm. been absolutely be beside himself in fact uh I, I i i i i promised him that i would keep him posted on all things and so i go to his uh grave site and uh i tell him the latest <laughs> so it's cathartic for me uh you know and it's uh i i i've kept my promise and uh and i i tell him uh how things are going and uh, and i'm afraid he would have said yep that doesn't surprise me yeah and in many ways diary he, he was a prophet because yeah um he was describing things that were occurring on myspace that were not occurring yet but are occurring mm -hmm. on facebook now yeah um, 
it was really ahead of its time. I mean, you can say that about just about all of George's films. He was ahead of his time. Well, you know, in his book, uh, he writes uh, about um, an aircraft carrier uh, that has a zombie outbreak. Mm -hmm. And it, it might as well be a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, oh my goodness, it's it's like, wow. It's a, this is the new novel? Yeah, it's exactly, mm -hmm. exactly what happened. And mm -hmm. it's it's disarming because you're like, okay, so it's zombies, but it's, it's the same thing, really. You know, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's almost um, like he could see it coming before it was coming. And yeah, it was like yeah. he low key warned us what was going to happen through his film. Right. And, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, you could look at four or five of his films and they kind of prophesize. And I, I don't like to use that word, but almost like warn us, like we're going to get to this mm -hmm. point. No matter mm -hmm. what we do, we're on tap to go right down this path. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen. And we are literally living it. You know, it was like in 1968, uh, you know, when he was writing a script and then, uh, you know, and then they decided to uh, cast Dwayne as the lead character and they didn't change the script at all. They just put Dwayne in the character. And, uh, you know, and Dwayne kept saying, you know, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, I'm hitting a white woman. Uh, that's not going to fly. And, and, and George would go, Jesus, it's 1968. We're mm -hmm. past that. Like we're totally past that, and yet we're not quite past that, are we? Mm -mm. Like no, we're no. not quite past it. And even in 1968, he kept thinking, "Geez, we're done. Like peace and love, man. Like we're done. We're good." Mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, you know, he just, um, yeah, he just, he just kind of uh, saw human uh, behavior um, as um, yeah he was he was pretty well spot on yeah to, to a pessimist help. through observation exactly yeah. yeah yeah I mean he saw human nature yeah I mean he, he I mean he never sugarcoated it he told us exactly yeah. how he saw it and yeah I mean Except he was he never really dealt with, you know, how do you pay your mortgage, though? You know? Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you, how, 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 how do you, like, make, you know, like, your car payments? <laughs> like, it was always sort of... A true bigger, artist. The, yeah, the bigger <laughs> picture. <laughs> Not the micro picture, yeah, which is yeah. what we all have to deal with uh, in, in our lives when we're dealing with, you know, uh, these crises you know we it's not about it's it, it is about the big picture but it's how as individuals we micro you know how we handle all of the little details that we have to deal with and George never wrote about stuff like that it was always bigger you know mm -hmm. um so you know yeah yeah um we have a, a <laughs> question from Alex one of one of our uh watchers uh, about a project mansions on the moon um yeah. I'm, i don't know if i'm familiar with that i'm not familiar yeah. with it either <laughs> I, remember Maybe he, I, I don't once, know if i should be he i, I remember know. he had a project it was shooby dooby moon i think maybe he's talking about that one that mm, that was I don't a know. Hmm. Okay. i don't know i have to say i'm sorry alex i i don't know <laughs> Well, but I, I, I'm going to write it down, and um, I think it was something him and Rudy Ricci were working on around oh, 1980. Okay, um, yeah. Shuby Dooby Moon, I want to say, but maybe Mansions on the Moon was something else entirely. So I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to walk all over Alex's question. But. I the don't only, know. The Alex, only thing I don't know. The only uh, thing I can come up with with George and Mansions on the Moon is is a piece of music. Um, along with Shooby Dooby Moon, according to a, a, a website on here, was included in a creep show soundtrack, or or some someone put out a compilation of George music. So I don't know if it was more of a music piece that was supposed to accompany a movie. Okay. Um, they kind of maybe wrote wrote a musical piece that they figured was going to be extrapolated on from a, a, a film standpoint. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Shooby Dooby Moon comes up every once in a while when we 
when, when we talk about that that 1980s era uh, of George, I've I've heard that a few times recently. Right. I don't know, Alex. I have to say, I don't know your an the question or, or the answer to your question, but I I have written it down and I'll I'll look into it. It's probably sitting behind another script somewhere. <laughs> well, no, it, it would be in the archive for sure. Yeah. And so I'll get Ben to do a little slew thing and see yeah, what we can come up with. Yeah, you never know. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's, you know, one of the, I don't want to say weird, but, it, you know, you know, since George is passing, there's obviously a spotlight on all the stuff that he's done or not done. So I'm hoping one of the positives that come out of the last few years since since George has left us is that, you know, we, we see some of these things that he's mentioned in, in one-off passings um, mm -hmm. that, that we can all, you know, look at, you know, his, his stories, his scripts, and, and even yeah. Will, Will just wrote, you know, what about his unproduced scripts? You know, George was always writing, yeah. you know, have you ever thought of, you know, through the Garf, maybe, op, you know, optioning these films and seeing what someone could do with a, you know, an unproduced George script that maybe could turn into a, a film yeah, festival type thing. Sure. Yeah. You know, but we have to be very careful. Um, we have to be very careful because uh, you, you want to make sure that uh, that nothing comes out uh, that's going to be garbage or just exploitive. And you, you just have to be careful. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to... Um, um i i just think we have to take it uh slow <laughs> take it slow take it um you know uh and figure it all out um but I, i'm not one to uh say let's make some money and let's rip it and go for it um i'm i'm all about making sure that his work and his his legacy is um you know is protected so for me uh it's about protection um mm -hmm. so um we'll get it we'll get some stuff sure, uh, we listen uh <laughs> george couldn't even get arrested you know <laughs> you know he'd say jesus nobody wants you know to do anything and i'd say well you know george you know he just finished writing the marvel comic um uh, for uh, Empire of the Dead, and then he wrote a short story for Jonathan Mayberry. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, in an anthology, and you know, so he was always working, uh, but but nobody was really interested in sort of producing any of his work. And then suddenly he passes, and people are knocking on my door, going, "Well, what about all those unproduced scripts?" Well, yeah. uh, fuck you. <laughs> you know like totally fuck you you know because uh yeah we've got them um uh, let's just see what we can do that's going to be you know maybe uh that makes his work uh that's going to just shine a beautiful light on them uh and we'll see but yeah. i'm in no hurry i absolutely am in no hurry no you want to do it right absolutely you, you got to do it right it's it's george you got to choose it uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Yep. Yeah. I bet it won't be too long until the Del Toros of the world come knocking and saying, hey, let me produce this or someone. So that's that's OK. But, you know, we would still have to make sure it gets done right. We have to make sure that it's not trashed and, uh, you know, we and that George's work is it doesn't lose his integrity. I mean, you know, I don't care who it is. It just needs to be uh, protected. So I am uh, a sentry at the door and you got to get through me first. <laughs> and it's not going to be so easy. No better sentry to have. Yeah, no better sentry, I have to say. Yeah. I, I think George would agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know, I see some comments, but I agree. There, there's a short list of people that I would say, give this to them. And they will do it right. There's a yeah. it's a very very short list. Yeah. Um. And I think we could all agree on a few of them. Uh, yeah. Offhand. That... I, lo I love Edgar. Like Edgar is yep. such a talent, and and I know he loved George. Uh. So I know that uh, everything he would do would be uh. You know he would he would do it right. 
uh, Guillermo, same thing. I mean, I just know the love there is so, um, is so, it's so important. Um, yeah. And yet you, and, but, but also you need Edgar to be Edgar, you know, and you need Guillermo yeah. to be Guillermo. And so oh. you need, you know, you need these artists to be who they are mm -hmm. uh, with the work that, you know, somebody else's work. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a merge. Um, but um, I, I, I'm not ready to sell, sell the bath. I'm just not ready to, yeah do anything stupid just yet yeah. so we'll no. see. You, you'll yeah. know when the time is right and yeah. and 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 it, not before and i mean that's you know it sucks on one hand because we want to see some I of this know. but and you but will the, but the yeah. time you know when we're all ready for it, it, yeah. it it'll be it, it'll mean yeah. more when the time is right yeah yeah exactly and you know there's so many projects and you know and i have a few things options so it's not like we're not you know prepared to uh, to let some of George's work out there, but you just have to be very judicious, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm prepared to do that. So, yep. yeah. George was quality over quanti quantity. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yep. There's no doubt about that. Yep. And, you know, he was sperm to egg. You know, he just was a driven, you know, he just, uh, he wasn't captured by the shining light. You know, he was, um, well, He'd say, "Oh, there's a shining light," <laughs> but <laughs> but he wouldn't go there if you know what I mean. Like he's human, so he yeah. would have noticed the shining light. But he still, though, was uh, very true to his art, and that's what we love about him. You mm -hmm. know, that's what we respect about him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so even me, you know, who who was not a fan of you know, his, uh, I was not a, I, I, I didn't even know who he was. Uh, but it was very obvious to me uh, right away when I saw his films that it wasn't just about, um, you know, gory stuff. You know, it was about, it was smart. Mm -hmm. And, and even someone who is not in his demographic knew it was smart. And, um, and, you know, it, it commanded respect, and um, and I, 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 you know, I respect it. So yeah. Well, uh, earlier when you when you wrote down uh, Alex's suggestion, that reminded me uh, on the Garf website, you actually have uh, a link to recommend some ideas to the Garf. I mean, did you maybe want to talk about that a little bit? I mean, you seem very receptive to. Uh, you know, the potential for a fundraiser or things like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm a, a person who's open to, uh, uh, to open to a, a, a place where uh, the foundation can be a, a, a positive, um, you know, smart, a place to be and I I'm open to all of it so mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I first of all I'm surrounded by very smart people and uh, and because uh, it takes it takes a team and I have a great team and um, uh, so you know we're always open for ideas and how we can advance the ball so mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I, I'm open to it. Yeah, no, we we love that you got the Garf going, and yeah. you know we know COVID's kind of hit a snag on on some of that stuff. Yeah. But it's it's times like these where we can you know kind of remind people that George is still living on through the Garf and and yeah. and, and stuff like this, and he's never truly going to be too far out of our minds. So uh, can I tell you a story, guys? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we found out that George was, uh, was terminal and, uh, he says to me, um, I don't want to talk about business at all. Okay. No problem. So we didn't talk about business, but we played a lot of Scrabble we were playing Scrabble one day. And I said to him, but you know, you know, not to talk really about business, but what do you think about your 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 legacy and your work and like how, like how are you how are you thinking about that 
and he said he looked at me first of all he paused and then he looked at me and he went eh, nobody really cares and i have to say uh that haunted me that haunted me then it haunted me after i lost him oh, we lost him and I, and you know, when I was in mourning and I was pacing and not knowing what I was going to do, I kept thinking that, that I can't buy. I just can't buy it. And then I found out that this group of people in Pittsburgh were doing a, a Romero thing, a festival. And I kept getting invited to attend, uh, uh, you know, 400 people on a phone call type of thing. And I thought, mm, okay. And I, I said, I, I really don't think a phone call is going to do. I'm going to go to Pittsburgh and I'm going to talk to you guys. And we had a meeting and we all got together and I kept thinking, people care. I mean, he was wrong. He was totally wrong. And that's what made me go here is, uh, I just thought he's wrong. And I'm going to prove it. And that's why I do what I do. Because I, he was wrong. And I, I think everybody agrees. So um, that's why I do what I do because it just didn't seem right. <laughs> so here I am, you know, uh, you know, Louisa May Alcott and, you know, uh, I am just not in this world, but I just said, I'm going to go in, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to find out about his work. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to make the foundation. I am going to surround myself with people who love him. I'm going to do these podcasts. I am going to release these, this movie. I am going to, I am going to do what I need to do because he was wrong for the first time. <laughs> he was wrong. 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, we love you for doing this. Yeah, because well, it, thank you. You know, it. You know, I can't. I can't. The strength. Yeah, every every time, you know, we we see news from you. I know we know it's you. We know you know his his legacy is in good hands, and I think he knew that even if he didn't care or think other people cared. Um, you know, it's you know, you know we're, just, we're, yeah. He just didn't have you know. First of all, there was no place to put his stuff. You know, at the time, like where would you have put? all his work you know there was no real place so we found a home so first that was the very first step was let's find a home <laughs> for his work uh and so it can be protected it could be george influenced me as the age of five <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know he influenced me too but i was 40 40. <laughs> <laughs> so you're never too late to fall in love with George. Oh, that's right. You no, know, and never, you know, never. and that's you know, it's we're all sitting oh, here. Will. Oh, hi, Will. You know, we're 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 all sitting here because of him, and and we're all that's still true. sitting here because of you. Uh -huh. And 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 I, you know, we're forever in your debt. You know, we're oh. we're we're constantly, you know in awe and inspired by, by what you do, because we, we all keep coming back for George, even with him not here. Right. We keep but, coming back for each other. Yeah. And, and there's that's exactly right. And that's where we have to just actually lay our hat is the fact that, uh, yeah, you have the snorfuls, Matt. Yeah. Sorry. You got me a little worked <laughs> up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold it together, but you know, it's, you know, like you said, you know, the, the, the day is coming up and it's an anniversary. I never thought I'd want to, you know, have to yeah. live through, but it's, you know, you, you just deal with it and 
you know, again, we, we do this because we love George and, you know, and, you know, I scroll through the comments, you know, people that I love and adore that I've met because of George and, you know, people like Eric that I've known for 20 years that, you know, you, you meet randomly through a website and they become lifelong friends and you yeah. have these, you have these adventures and these, you know, these great stories that right. not everybody can relate to, but boy, I guarantee you, your eyes light up when you're telling them. Yeah. And and I'll never get tired of telling them. I'll never get tired of hearing them because I always love hearing people's stories of the first time they met George and how they were. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, Mike Felsher always has a story. He goes, George, George never thought of himself as a sacred cow, but we sure treat him like one uh, mm. because we 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 adore the man and he, it, his humbleness. And, yep. and, you know, he never thought of himself as George Romero, at least in my eyes. I never, you know, he, he was just George. And that's what I say. You know, he was, he was just George and, you know, watching him, you know, it shows with people and talk, I could have done it all day and mm -hmm. never, never been tired of it. I don't care how many times I heard the same story just to hear his voice and to see that big smile light up a room and that laugh. Um, oh my just, God, that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I would just stop what I'm doing when I'd hear his voice and, you know, I'd be in on, you know, I kind of forget everything else and just, just hone in on him and, yeah. you know, and that's. And the comments are just pouring in from, I mean, these are people from all over the world, you know, other countries, UK, Canada, USA, and they're all just talking about how we all came together through his films. And, you know, I mean, we met, obviously, you know, Christian Stravakis, amazing artist. Um, and we've known him for, you know, 20 plus years, but, you know, we, we've met some, a handful of people from the UK just a couple, three, four years ago that if, you know, they're right there, they've, they've caught up to speed. Yeah. And, uh, so it's, yeah. it's really, uh, yeah. you know, whether we've known you two years or 20, I mean, you're, you're part of the family and we're yeah. welcome you with open arms and, and, yeah. and, and now, what you're doing is a big part of that. And we, we th can't thank you enough for what you're doing. Well, listen, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I needed, I needed to prove him wrong. <laughs> so here we go. Oh man. I'm, I'm sure glad I didn't hear him say that. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I, I would have probably, been, I, I would have, I would have given him a stern look and be like, have you no, met you? Yeah, no. <laughs> have you met you? Do you know who you are? Cause I, you know, I know that, about a thousand people that are going to disagree with you. So, yeah. but you know, but you know, he was so disappointed in the business and, and he was disappointed and he had some disappointments. And so I think that was, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, he said it. Um, I, I'm sure he meant it. Uh, but. Um, well, I mean, quite honestly, the industry should have been kissing his ass. I mean, yeah. he should have been able to easily I mean, green light up with that. He was a legend, and it's no excuse yeah. for him to have trouble making films after yeah. all the epic films yeah. that he had under his belt. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, he, you know, the the business failed him. He didn't fail the, you know, the industry. Um, right. and he proved him wrong. He proved him wrong without trying to prove them wrong. You know, he yeah. he he made his films his way. And that's what I tell people is, you know, this is a George Romero movie. This is the movie that George wanted. He didn't settle. And, right. and I think we love him more for that. Even if you loved or didn't love certain films, they, they were George's films. Yeah. And so, and so you know that, he, that one of the reasons he loved Martin was because he got to uh, shoot that film, uh, every frame of that film he he got to do everything he wanted to do mm -hmm. frame by frame like that never happens for an artist like mm -hmm. in the film business you know yep. there's suits there's producers there's you know like there's you know uh what do they call those people that look at your movie and say, Oh, I hate it. Oh, ending. Critics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, You're like, really? The ending is pretty good. Uh, like in monkey shines, right. Where he lost that battle, right. He, his ending got changed because there was, you know, these groups that kept thinking, Oh, we don't think that ending's so very good. The orange you know? County kids. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. God. <laughs> but with Martin, 
from the minute he wrote it to the minute he shot it and cut it and put it in a can, it was his movie 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's so rare for an artist in the film business to experience it. And he experienced it. So it's um, his favorite because uh, it's as an artist, he got to paint the painting. Maybe the closest um, he ever came to being an auteur on a project, perhaps. Yeah, like, you know, he first of all, he wrote all the books all the movies he wrote like he did so so as a as a filmmaker uh when you're when you're the you're the writer director essentially editor uh pretty well controls the process yeah. but then if you have like in land of the dead or uh a dark half where the budget is big that means that people have you know, uh, a say uh -huh. in, in uh -huh. how things get done. And, uh, and that's why George liked small movies. He liked small budgets. Give me, just give me 2 million. Just give me 2 million. I can do a great movie. Yep. But, you know, uh, so it's, you know, anyway, uh, he was disappointed in, in, in the business. Um, you know, he was writing his, in his uh, his autobiography, and he'd say, "Sus, read uh, read the next chapter," and I'd read it, and I'd say, "Jesus, George, it's so so sad, so mean, so 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 negative, so uh, you know." Well, it's the truth, and I went, but. Jesus, <laughs> you had a good life. You had a great, you did great films. You're beloved. You know, there's, there, you, you, you need to take the positives here. Uh, but he was, you know, a bit angry, you know. So, you know, I thought, mm, okay, let's, let's prove you wrong. You, you might have opened a wormhole there. Uh, autobiography. Um, yeah. He, he wrote, he, he wrote bits. Definitely. Yeah. 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 But I never thought. Yeah. But they were all, it's all very, you know, negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never thought I'd say the words, I can't wait to prove George Romero wrong. Yeah. By continuing his legacy. And, you know, I, I hope in whatever afterlife or whatever you believe in that he, he's, he's just given that smile and, and shaking his head and, you know, seeing that, you know, we're, we're doing what we do because we love him because he loved what he loved doing. And he loved movies and he loved making them. Uh, yeah. So there, there are no doubt. So he got to do what he loved. Uh, mm -hmm. And so he should have been happy about that. And he was, mm -hmm. and he was grateful uh, for it. Uh, there, he was, he was grateful. It's just that, you know, I just think he just thought that, you know, it's a business and yeah. Yeah, you sometimes get wrapped up in all the minutia of the business that you just kind of forget about all the other stuff. And yeah, you don't take a minute to realize, hey, what's going on over there? Oh, my God, they love me. And, you know, yeah. George wasn't that type of person. You know, he never, you know, he never thrived on that type of attention. But no, he, uh, no, he, you know, his, but, he but, didn't have that type of ego. He had an ego, uh, but not that kind of an ego. I, yeah. I, I remember when I told him that my son's middle name was Romero and he just said, why would you do that to that kid? <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and that's, you know, it made me love him more because I was yeah. like, well, I love you, George. And, you know, I want to do something. George yeah. would see tattoos, you know, like tattoos of him or his movies. And, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, he was a bit of an anti-tattoo guy, uh, <laughs> but and he would never sign his signature on his, he'd say, I, I, I draw the line on drawing lines on human bodies. <laughs> okay. uh, so, but he would see, you know, these tattoos and, and, and he'd go, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? The glasses, his glasses, or, yeah. you know, his face, or, you know, yep. uh, you know, he just, he was baffled by it. He was baffled by zombie walks. He was baffled by all of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he inadvertently created a whole movement and created yeah. a, created a community and a family. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I think we just, we always want to give back. 
we always want to show how much we love and, you know, we all do it in our own way. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, I don't think there was ever enough ways that we could thank him, you know? I agree. And we also are, we're always looking for new avenues to, to explore his work and appreciate his work. And that's, that's where you come in, Suze, and you've been doing a, an amazing job for the last couple of well, years. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely love every single thing you do and have done. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. It gives yeah. me gives me the strength to carry on. <laughs> yeah. Well, she. I mean, and the, obviously, if there's any, you know, anything that we can do, do, do not hesitate to ask. Because we. Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll yep. do whatever it takes. We'll we'll yep. whatever it takes. Yep. You, um, thank you. you. I, I appreciate that. I really yeah. do because it takes um it takes a community, right? As you know, I know it's uh you know it's a uh, uh what do they call those uh you know uh, big statements, but really that's what it takes. And uh, um and I can't do it alone. And I know that he was wrong. So let's see if we can carve <laughs> a path together, <laughs> right? And and, yes. and make new make new things happen. Yeah. Maybe that's a bumper and, sticker. George Romero and, was wrong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then and then maybe we can make not a new Romero, a new different Romero, you know, like yeah. somebody who or or she or he or it, you know, can mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. or they, you know, whatever, uh, you know, they can forge a path that uh, you know, to allow them to flourish in this world that is full of, you know, commercialism, full of people who are greedy, people who are full of, you know, um, you know, just not wanting to, uh, to make the right art, you know, they just want to just package something. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, let's see, let's see what we can do. Yeah, we're going to keep doing it. I don't okay. think we'll ever stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. <laughs> So, so happy well, 4th of July, everybody. Thank you. Uh, going off. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, uh, I can hear him on so my end. I, please, I know that George was very famous for saying, please stay scared, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, please stay safe and um, uh, have fun, but just do it safely. We will. And same to you. Thank Amazing. you. Thank and you. hope to I, I hope to go to the USA very soon, but we'll have to see how it all works out. Yeah. We'll do it when <laughs> it's right safe. Right now, it's not so good. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Sue. I, 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 I really appreciate this. No, thank you for your time. We love you. We thank okay. you. I'll we'll talk to Bye. you soon. Bye, right. everybody. Bye. Take care. See ya. Bye. So, how do I? <laughs> <There it is. laughs> Sky flowers. Yeah. Oh man, it's dusty in here. Um, yeah. Suze, if you're watching, you can just click out, just close your browser. You're good to go. Wow, <laughs> that was great. That was, uh, you know, yeah. you know we we have folks on. You never know how. You know, we we had a little bit of a backup plan in case it only went, you know, thirty minutes or so. But I I think we've had a really uh, a full. Uh, healthy show here. Yeah, I, uh, I, man, I've been around Sue's a lot, and in the last couple of years, every time I see her, I tend to get emotional, and I, I, I kind of wasn't prepared for that. That was, uh, yeah. I actually, I was, I kind of, I kind of toughened up for this one because I, yeah. I'll be honest, <laughs> when, I, when I listened to that, uh, I've listened to the 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 previous interview we've done with her a couple times, and I. I just can't get through that when she talks about the Felcher stuff, the, the the recordings that they made. It's just like, man, you know. Yeah. I, it's so. Uh, mm. Yeah, I, mean, I was. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I no matter how much I try to toughen myself when I know I'm gonna talk to Suze or be around her, it there there's just she's very disarming. Mm -hmm. She's she's just open and welcoming and loving and and a very good compliment for George, especially later in life. And, and when everything was happening with all the conventions and all the news press and, you know, when he was, you know, everyone was writing an interview with him, you know, she was always in the background and you could tell the love she has for him. And I don't want to say had still has for him and, mm -hmm. and, and just, 
you know, when she talks and you can see it and you can hear it. Um, yeah. I don't think I could ever toughen up. <laughs> it, it just, just, just being around her just, just gets me thinking about George and, and just seeing them two together. And yeah, you know, yeah. it's, you know, so, you know, yeah, I probably, I was trying to hold it together and, then, <laughs> and, and, and what, what pushed me over the edge is when she was talking about that stuff with Felsher and she looked at him and talked about surviving and he goes, good, huh? And, you know, that was just yeah. so, so unlike George, something you never saw or heard from him. And I could just see that happening. And that just, that's what broke that barrier down for me. I said, all right, that's it. I'm, I'm eventually going to get to that point where, uh, it's going to become noticeable. And she called me out on it. And I was like, oh man, it's that obvious. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe this will brighten your day up a little bit. I, I, or not, I don't know. I, for some reason, man, I, I completely flipped on diary again last night. I, and I, and when I was, I saw it a few times in the theater and, and I was even in the theater, I was going back and forth between genius and not genius, you know, but I, for whatever reason, man, it, it really, and maybe it is kind of like what we were talking about, how it's more relevant to write this second, uh, that perhaps that that's, you know, the reason why it's uh, turned around for me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those movies that you're going to not think about going back and watching, especially in this day and age. But, you know, when you were watching it last night, it started making me think about, I, I, I should go pop it back in. And, and, and I've always said that I felt that diary is the weakest of, of, of the zombies uh, mm. films only because a lot of the voiceover kind of takes me out of it. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to kind of go back and watch it again and, and, and kind of disregard that point that I, I feel is weak. Um, because yeah, I mean, he was, I mean, my space, Oh five, Oh six got popular, came to be. And in Oh eight, he's making a movie basically kind of, noticing that the social media thing was was changing the way we behave and the and the way we interact with each other and i i'm kind of thinking now i'm kind of hoping that of any one of his movies that kind of gets a second life in in this environment we live in is something like diary where you know we're, we're filming everybody and everything i mean mm -hmm. not a day goes by that we don't see some video of some somebody doing something in public that was captured on film with with you know a running commentary and then it gets it goes viral before viral was a you know right you know, you know his movie was viral um yeah it's it's definitely one of those that i think a lot of people uh matthew day yeah. and the music intended to scare you yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i i think diary might be one of the most underrated we, you're you're on to something with what you're saying because we take these relatively small aspects of these films and apply it to the whole film. I mean, the narration probably occurs what in three percent of the film. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, yeah. for instance, the like when um, the what's her name from Texas pulls off and they play the stupid little song. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's kind of corny, but that was only ten seconds of the film. You know, where we we use that to color the rest of the film somehow. Yeah, I I, th I think you're right. I I think when we look at at films as a whole, we look at what we didn't like and 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 yeah. really put a magnifying glass on that. And and I and I I was always okay if people say, "Oh, I didn't like this movie. I didn't like this movie. Or this is trash." That's fine. That's your opinion. Um, but I think sometimes if if you allow yourself to go back and watch any film, whether it's a George film or any popular film or B film, if you allow yourself to go back and try to enjoy it or try to just see what the film is trying to do. It may never succeed, but there's gotta be something we can find enjoyable about every movie. Who wants a shout out? I can't, it's uh, just that's, a Facebook user. That, that, that's my friend, Jason, Jason Glantz. He, uh, okay. he's a, he's a, he's a Zack Snyder book of shadows apologist who, uh, <laughs> who, um, <laughs> somehow infiltrated my network of friends and, and won't ever leave. Like he showed up to sleep on my couch for a weekend and he's never left. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I met Jason at the land of the dead premiere in Pittsburgh um, at the after party. Uh, he's a, he's a Pittsburgh guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and 15 years ago, you know, we've been inseparable ever since. And, you know, he lives in New York. He came out to a living dead weekend a couple years ago because I finally, uh, 
busted his balls enough to to finally make it back home and, and come to a convention. So uh, oh, he doesn't live in Pittsburgh now. No, he lives in Manhattan. He actually lives. Um, okay. He lives uh, very close to the uh, the Times Building. He uh, he took me to visit the Daily Planet Globe when I was in New York last year for doing a, a BuzzFeed event. Uh, it was the first time I'd seen him in like 13 years. Uh, oh, no, I, I mean, after that, it was sorry. It was like a year after I saw him in the Living Dead weekend, but uh, it it was nice to see him again in New York. And uh, you know, we like to shoot the shit throughout the day and text messages and whatnot. And uh, you know, Jason Jason's a good guy. He just he likes to bust balls. And uh, um, yes, unrelease the Snyder Cup Dawn. Yes, yes, I I agree. Let's unrelease the Dawn of the Dead cut, uh, the Dawn of the Dead two thousand and four movie. Um, yeah, no, ni nice little levity to break up the the tear fest that I'm that I'm yeah. probably having over here, and I'll probably have tonight. Um, but yeah, no, when we were when we were talking last week, and the amusement park news hit, you know, we were talking. It's like we gotta get, let's talk to Suze. I mean, it, it's one thing to get you know a soundbite or um, you know a new you know a news release or something, and you know finally see what Suze has in plan, and you know it's well, it cleared it up. I mean, it. I thought. And I think many of the news outlets handled it incorrectly. They've got people thinking that this group is the group that's going to release it, but they're going to secure the releasing. So, yeah, yeah. So we so haven't I mean, found a distributor just yet, but they work. They have a you know professional outfit that's working on it now. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I hope you know the, one they get they get the rights to release it, and you know I really don't care how they do it as long as it can be released. Um, you know, I, I, I was going to say to Suze, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on it because she started talking about some other stuff. Put the winners on there. You know, mm -hmm. put the winners in, in the amusement park. And I know she, she I, I feel that or she like wants the, uh, the thing she mentioned, the uh, uh, expostulations. I mean, it's only 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, why not just make, you know, all of the lost Romero stuff in one place? I mean, it's a treasure chest of, of, you know, an insight to George that, you know, even you and me didn't get a lot of insight to until, you know, recently, or, you know, that a lot of people don't know about, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's, there's the hardcore Romero fans that, you know, we run with and we talk to a lot and that, you know, that are watching that are going to eat this up in a heartbeat and you'll get, hundreds maybe thousands of people but there's also the other people that are always influenced by george and that might you know george might not be their favorite but they have that love of george and i think something new from george is gonna you know kickstart like i never knew george did this oh huh, i'll take a look you know i'll spend 25 bucks and you never know and like sue said you know all of that money is going to go back to the garf mm -hmm. and you know, we we talk about, you know, all oh, the the, you know, horror is shit. You know, all this mass market produced horror is horrible. I wish we had good stuff. People that are going to be benefiting from Garf, I think, are going to be able to give us what we want. But they yeah. have they have to have the, the money, the technical prowess and the skills honed in. And I, I feel that the Garf is going to be able to help. Get that out there. You know, even if someone from Garth isn't one of the next big things, hopefully it will inspire others. Yeah. To to pick up the camera and make their own movie because we can all we can all film on these. Mm -hmm. But can we make a good movie? Do you have talent? You know, yeah, you gotta put it together. And even if you fail, it's okay to fail. Make a movie and fail. Because, you know, one of the things that George said that always resonated with me, and I was at the same event in New England that I saw him at, someone got up and said, George, how, how, can, how can someone make it in the business? And, and I remember very clearly George just said, make the fucking movie. He just said, make the movie. That, he didn't say get it distributed, make a million dollars, make the movie. You have to make a movie to make it. And if you're afraid to pick up the camera and make a movie and even fail, then you're never going to get to where you want to be. I want to mention Mark, Mark Anthony Curzon again. You're in the UK and it's what, I don't even know, three in the morning or something. So, And we promised, man, I think we're going to get back to our regularly scheduled uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Saturday at some point. So yeah. make it a little more uh, overseas friendly. Yeah. Yes, we apologize, guys. It is our Fourth of July. It is it is the day that Rocky defeated communism and we gained our independence from Ivan. Dr oh wait, wrong, wrong. 
Holiday. If I can change, anyone can change. <laughs> um, yeah. So with it being Fourth of July, um, you know, it was it, it was a Friday night event. So to to all our uh, British friends, uh, thank you for tuning in and thank you for the independence. Thank you for losing in 1776. We appreciate it. Um, no, I just you know we love you guys. Um, but yeah, no, I mean we had to have Sue's on. Yeah, yeah. We you know Sue's Sue's was a necessity. Um, especially, you know, after such a, such an announcement to hopefully get people to tune in and, 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 you know, hopefully get some news, um, get some excitement, get some talking going. Cause I think the yeah. more that, you know, we let people know, you know, you know, people are going to, you know, if you go to Google and type in the amusement park, if people are writing blogs and posts, it's going to catch on to that algorithm and, um, Mm-hmm. you know you know hopefully we'll we'll get there and yes it's actually officially return of the living dead day um fourth of the july weekend buddy boy. um I, I mean obviously the better of the happens, return, don't name it after me <laughs> the better of the return of the living dead movies is return of the living dead part two but i will celebrate I'm losing return you of the right dead. now I, I i'm losing <laughs> you um i'm gonna oh you're back okay <laughs> uh, it's it, it's it's happy to get that damn screwdriver out of my head day you right. know that's uh but no i i was i i could listen to sue's talk all night um yeah let's yeah. you know as things develop let's let's i mean let's bring her back on let's make this a i mean if if willing uh we'll make this a platform for her to speak her yeah. mind about things yeah absolutely i mean sue's sue's has an open invite um all the time you know we're big supporters of the garth and you know we're going to do everything we can to help them uh, spread the word, you know, raise money, donate. If you guys go to the garf.org or George A. Romero foundation.org, there is a donate link. Um, there's three different spots that you can, you can donate funds to, um, five bucks, give a dollar. Um, you can also, uh, go in the store and buy, you can buy the t-shirt. I think they're sold out of the Romero dolls, but you can still buy the t-shirt. They're a little pricey, but it is for the charity and it is a really cool shirt. So yeah, I mean, that's one of the, most comfortable shirts I've worn in the last couple of years. The one we picked up a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I, I have a yellow one and a gray one. I really love the gray one. Um, yeah. It's super comfortable. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it fits perfectly. So, you know, you know, like Sue says, you know, we, she doesn't just want to put something out there to put it out there. It, that's not what it's about. It's got to be done for the right reason. And, mm-hmm. and we all, I think we'll never have an app, our appetite for George satisfied. Um, so she's, she's going to find the right way to do it. And, you know, and like, you know, I think Will had said, and I had even said, you know, he's got all these unproduced scripts, you know, even student films or something, you know, there's, there, there's multiple avenues. We have to find the right one at the right time for the right reason. Um, yeah, and, and I think she will, I, I think there's, there's enough time and room out there for, for us to get all of this at, you know, when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, cause George was never one to just do something to make a buck. And, yeah. and, and I think we, we will be satisfied whenever the amusement park gets released on home video and people get to buy it. It gives people time, you know, to really go into his catalog. You know, we see all the time people talking about, I need to see vanilla or I need to see monkey shines or I need to see dark hat. Um, you know, now's the perfect time to, to really, you know, fill that hole in your collection or, or your viewing gap uh to to keep it going yeah yeah i know it, once we figure out the technology i don't know if we got to get the uh the pay version or some or a pay version of Streamyard or whatever but um you know perhaps we can do like a watch along of one of the winners or something i'd love to throw the uh throw the oj one on do a- yeah i mean i mean find out what you know what we can do and you know for for a donation to the garf or something you you can you know, join in the stream, you know, join the stream or something. You, it's, now you're talking, you know, I, I'm all for doing whatever it is I need to do to get people to donate to the Garf. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's sitting here and we just sit and watch along to the winners, whether it's an episode or two, or we do a little mini marathon or something, um, as long as Garf benefits, uh, I, I'm all for it. I don't think anyone will say no to doing something like that. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up for this evening's uh, edition, or edition of uh, the WGN Live Traffic Report. But for those of you that were watching live, I mean, this will be posted on our Facebook page. We'd 
appreciate it if you could share it around to other interested parties and uh, just kind of spread the word of uh, the amusement park and the upcoming release and all of the efforts uh, that the GARF is, uh, the, the GARF initiatives, if you will. Yeah, no, thank you guys very much for, for chiming in. I know Suze was having a good time and she was super excited when uh, when she was, was able to come on and, you know, we're going to keep that going. Um, like Eric said, you know, hopefully we'll get back to our, our, our semi-regular Saturdays, uh, for more people to join in. We know it's summertime, but we're, we can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So let's all hang out. Um, you know, yeah. yard's a great thing, you know, maybe we'll try to do some theme episodes or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to figure out. So it's always as interactive as we can make it. Um, you know, we, you know, we we do this for, for us and for everybody, you know, we love mm -hmm. doing it. Um, we spend a lot of time. I mean, I'm sure if we, if we sat down and wrote down our list of the things we've talked about wanting to do, we'd have a couple notebooks, uh, full of stuff to, to do. And, and I think this, this platform gives us the opportunity to do different things. Um, you know, I, I love seeing everybody hang out and make the comments. You know, I try to keep up with them as much as I can. Um, we really love your guys' support, just tuning in and hanging out with us, uh, mm -hmm. whenever we can. And, um, yeah, we'll try to do some other fun stuff, you know, try to figure out what we can do. And, um, yeah, we've got no shortage of ideas, but if you've got some ideas, we're all ears as well. So, yeah, you guys, you know, hit us up on the WGON page, WGON radio at gmail.com. Um, you know, submit questions, show ideas. Um, mm -hmm. things you want to do if, if, you know, Eric and I are both in the Berg together, um, you know, we'll sit in and, you know, he'll drink an insanity. I'll drink an iron city and we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out. We're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing this as long as you guys will allow us to. Absolutely. All right. All right we'll just, uh, stay tuned to the WGO and Facebook page and we'll, we'll be coming up with another show before too long. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good and safe 4th of July. Be safe. Take care, guys.